what if you want to lay this sod by yourself? Uh, the first question you would have to you would have to ask yourself: Do you do you have a access to a pickup or a trailer or an SUV that's capable of picking up uh, from our yard the amount of sod that you wanted? Uh, we we recommend no more than a half pallet or 225 square feet in a half ton pickup, and then at least a three quarter ton or bigger, say an F250 or 350 or the Chevrolet 2500 plus. Uh, or, or a trailer that, that's capable of carrying the weight to pick up more than a, a, a pallet or more. Uh, so if you do have the capacity to do that, great. Come and get it. You save yourself the delivery cost. Uh, a lot of people will go and rent like the truck that you see around town from Home Depot or rent a U-Haul trailer or, or the heavier duty U-Haul trucks and uh, you, you, can, you can do that. Uh, if you want to uh, avoid that hassle, expense, headache, whatever, we can deliver it to you. We bring it with our truck and set it off on your driveway or as close as we can get to your, uh, where you're going to be working with our, with our forklift. Uh, which is, is nine feet wide, I think, eight and a half feet wide and fairly tall. So it can't go off road much and it certainly can't go in any backyards, but we get it as close as we can for you. Uh, but I guess, so, so that's the getting, the getting the grass to the site, that's step one, but then you have to, uh, you, you would definitely, I would say a, a wheelbarrow would be, would be a worthy investment. Uh, but before you even get to the ordering the grass or anything like that, or, or coming and picking up the grass and taking it to your house, uh, preparation is absolutely the most important part. Uh, short, short of picking the right supplier and getting, uh, getting good quality grass, uh, that preparation can make all the difference in the world. Uh, if you've got a lot of vegetation there, uh, especially Bermuda grass, you would want to spray that out with Roundup and give it uh, uh, seven to 10 days to die. And then you would, uh, we, we rent the sod cutter from Home Depot. Uh, Lowe's, I don't believe, does that, but I'm sure there's a lot of rental companies that sell equipment that's similar. Uh, and you have, to, you have to go and you, the machine cuts out a 16 inch swath uh, every pass that you make. And uh, then you basically roll that up and haul it off and then uh, you, you need to smooth the area out. Uh, some people, in order to cut, cut some time and expense, they'll still do the roundup, but then they'll just take a weed eater, a big gas-powered weed eater, a heavy-duty one, and, and cut that grass down as low as you can get in your backyard, uh, or, or front yard for that matter, uh, and, and then lay the grass down on top of that. As the, what we tell everybody, the, the, the more dirt on dirt contact, so the bottom of the piece of grass versus the ground, the more dirt on dirt contact you can get, uh, the less chance there is for air pockets to form in there. Uh, when air pockets form, when the, little, when the new little white roots start to grow out in a week or so, if they hit air pockets, they die. So uh, the, the more, more dirt on dirt contact you can get, and, the, that, and that's also another one of the reasons that we mentioned watering heavily up front is because you get rid of those air pockets uh, between those two spaces and uh, but preparation is very important uh, and like I said before you even get to the stage of, of ordering grass you need to make sure that all the vegetation and debris is gone uh, that, that your sprinkler heads are marked if you have those and uh, that, that your irrigation system or you have you it, it's also real important if, if you don't have an irrigation system making sure that you have hoses and sprinklers laying there waiting because as soon as you lay that grass especially the hotter parts of the year it's very important for you to uh, to, to follow that up with with lots of water and not wait a day or two or it, uh, if you try to do this in July and wait a day or two the grass probably would not survive uh, if you didn't follow it up with water within uh, within a day or two for sure but like i said we recommend following it up with water immediately as soon as you drop that piece of grass on the ground uh the faster you get uh water on it the better and uh and, and so uh, after you get it laid uh some people would ask if do i need to roll it uh, we, we, with our grass, some people roll some of the grass that's not quite the quality of ours. Uh, it might have frayed edges and whatnot, so they roll it. The reason they roll it is to keep, push those frayed edges down. You don't have that issue with ours. Uh, if you just water it enough those first couple of days, and, and, and if it's a hotter part of the year, those first couple of weeks, uh, you, you don't need to roll or anything like that. Uh, so that, that would be the other uh, thing. 
I would also, if, if, if I was thinking about doing this project myself, I would say a worthy investment would be a good machete in addition to rent it, renting or buying that wheelbarrow because it's a lot easier to lay your grass neatly and, and make neater cut with a machete than it is with, with a shovel or, or, or something, something else. That, that, would, that would be something that I would recommend as well.